I'll have to feather my starts and my stops. I haven't done that yet, but you can gauge your cup and your tungsten where your tungsten is just going to break the inside or just touch the bevel. That's kind of how I do it. And when I lay my rod in there, if you'll notice on some of the footage, you see you're walking your fingers, the rod in your fingers. That's why you need thinner gloves than you would normally weld on another process with stick rod or something so you can actually feel the rod because you have to manipulate the rod so much with TIG welding. So you just gradually just walk that thing in. Sometimes you'll spin it to keep it from sticking. If you keep spinning the rod in a circular pattern, it keeps the rod from being stuck sometimes to the inside of the pipe. When the heat it just cools off enough so that the metal is not melting. It'll stick immediately once the temperature drops below a certain degree. So when you walk the cup, you're actually wanting to roll your wrist. And you're just applying a slight pressure. You're going up, down, up, down, and so forth and so on. This is, a, this is a good cup for a root. That's why they make different size cups. Uh, when you get to the outside, if you're gonna put a TIG all the way around, which we're not, we're gonna stick weld this as well, you can get a bigger cup so that way the roll would be bigger, like a bigger tire on a car or something. It would cover more surface area. And so it's less action on the wrist and less walking of the cup. But for a root, this is a perfect size cup for this bevel. So when I come in here to put my root in, I've got the 532 gap. You can either come from the side and start right in. And what you'll want to do is kind of hang to the top a little bit. Whether you do it on the outside, I recommend that you do it closer to the inside. And you'll want to hang to the top on this. Heat the top, start heating. Then bring your rod into position. Your metal is already hot. You've walked the cup as I've shown you before. Heating up the surface very quickly on this because you don't want to heat that bottom and open that up. So you'll heat your surface. Then you'll come in and you'll just start Hitting that top and dragging to the bottom. Hitting the top, dragging to the bottom. Hitting the top, dragging to the bottom. And you'll feed that wire in as you go, but you don't want to push too much rod. And the only way you're really going to be able to fundamentally get this is to finally put what I'm telling you into practice naturally. You'll have to practice this physically to get the hang of it. But at least mentally, you know the position of the cup, you know the position of your rod, you, you get a feel for it already while you're sitting in your living room or in your dining room or on your couch somewhere or laying in your bed. That's the whole point of this home study course is to give you a map in your mind so that way you already know what to look for when you get out and you actually start physically welding. So you'll just walk the cup or if you wanted to, you can position your fingers and you can come straight in. And you can just go up and down with your rig that way. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, but a suggestion would absolutely be to learn how to walk the cup. Some guys in the past said, well, how do you learn to walk the cup really well and such and such? And they, well, use a glass mayonnaise jar or something and walk the cup on that. I never did that. Glass is a lot slicker than this steel. And it's probably a good practice if you can handle it, but I never walked the cup on a, a mayonnaise jar. I just did it uh, in test booths on the job. Practice, practice, practice. You're just going to walk the cup. You're going to roll your wrist. Now in the bevel, you can really just slide that around because this surface is shined up real well. I've actually taken a piece of soapstone at times and use soapstone on a rough surface like this outer part of the pipe where it's not real shined up and I've hit that with soapstone 
and it makes things slide a lot easier and it's not going to hurt the surface of the material it's, it's made for marking metal but I've used soapstone to make things uh, move easier where there's some rust or some buildup on a material because you don't want to hit that with a grinder and scratch that all up the, the inspector will knock that out because they don't want to they, they don't want you to take away from the surface of the material uh, if you can help it that's taboo that's a no-no so it's real easy in here but out here it's you can hear I hopefully can hear I don't know it's pretty it's pretty rough so you would roll this and while you're rolling this you want to be mindful that you're not dipping your tungsten as you're coming around and it's only going to be able to you feel comfortable with it as you practice but you'll want to keep your tungsten almost at the same level and if you put pressure it will slide you'll dip your tungsten you'll have to stop you'll grind I mean that's just sometimes the way TIG welding is but you want to roll and walk this why we're told we're calling it walking the cup that's what we're doing we're actually laying the cup on the surface and we're walking the cup in a circumference pattern as we sweep with our tungsten and notice how the tungsten is really at the same area almost the same measurement from the distance of this material out like an invisible plane I'm trying to follow a line in the dimension there So, oh. okay, I've zoomed in a little bit. I stayed a little further out uh, just now instructing, so I wanted to come in a little bit so you could see a little better. You're just manipulating that cup. Good practice is also to have your wrist straight out holding your rig. You may have to drag back and reposition but one of the things you can do with the TIG process is while you're in the bevel and let's say things get a little hot and you don't want to really break your arc and have to reheat everything but you you want to quit melting you want to quit actually welding you just back instead of in you know burning your consuming your rod in the material your parent material this pipe is called the parent material instead of burning it all together and fusing it you just back your cup out <clears throat> you'll keep an arc going but it will not heat and consume the metals you just back your arm out back your cup out back your wrist out and when you're ready take a little break now one thing you be careful with this though is that if you begin to heat this surface up without some kind of filler going on if it's if it's too close to keep an arc going and it's too close you could implant some porosity and you'll begin to burn this surface but with no uh, filler metal which takes out the turbulence sometimes welding without filler metal you you that turbulence of the gas starts pushing the air that's inside your pipe around uh, in a circular pattern it creates a vortex of atmosphere and a circular swirl it's a turbulence begins to uh, form and without the rod in there breaking that as a wind block almost and that metal in there causing that not to be able to get to your rig you can actually see the surface begin to pop and bubble and you're going to start causing imperfections in your parent metal if you're not careful but that is a trick you can do 